Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSNC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello, everybody. How is it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Happy Thursday, if you are listening to this on the Thursday. Um, I hope you've been having an amazing week. I've had quite a busy week, which it's been it's been really good though. So I'm happy to be back here to share more things with you on how to live your life to the happiest and the fullest. And today's episode, as I'm sure you can tell by the title, is all about letting go of guilt, shaking off that burden on your back, and setting yourself free. Um, guilt is something that I think all of us, most of us, feel at one point in our lives. Um, And when we have an excessive amount of guilt, it can lead us down quite a terrible path. Guilt is really, really hard to let go of, I think, personally. Um, I Maybe that's just the personality that I have. It's kind of different for everybody. So what exactly is guilt? Well, if it's, you know, I'm I'm sure you know what guilt is, but basically when we cause harm to somebody else or a situation... Guilt is that natural emotional response. And guilt is really like self-focused. Like it's all about ourselves, right? Um, But it can also be, it's very like socially relevant um, when someone feels guilt. And, you know, guilt is really thought to serve like more important interpersonal functions, you know, by encouraging, you know, yourself, encouraging somebody else to repair, like, a valuable relationship or um, make their wrongs a right, right? You know, like, try to do do better. Um, so guilt can be an actual really good thing because when you mess up, when you hurt somebody, when you, when a situation happens that's, that's not all positive and you feel guilt, it can make you kind of push a little bit forward to apologize, to feel better, to make the situation right again. Um, so it can be a good thing. But when we have too much guilt, so an excessive amount of guilt without the ability to let it go, to forgive yourself, you know, and actually move on with your life, then this can leave that heavy burden on your shoulders, which then can lead you down a path to more serious mental health issues. When you are feeling an abundance of guilt for a long period of time, depression will start to form. Anxiety will start to form. If you've never even had a mental illness before, but you are feeling so much guilt, um, you can definitely go down the path to depression and anxiety and, and lots of other mental illnesses as well. So, Making sure that we're able to let go of guilt is so important. And, you know, we all make mistakes. We, you know, whether we harm somebody intentionally or unintentionally, um, we can feel guilt no matter what. So today's episode is going to be talking about shaking it off, you know, setting yourself free, letting go of that guilt. Um, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks of exactly how we can let go of our guilt. And then I'm going to jump into exactly what survivor's guilt is. Um, I'm going to explain that, give you some tips to cope with survivor's guilt. I'm going to talk a little bit about some studies that have happened in the past about survivor's survivor's guilt. And then I will end today's episode with talking about a guilt trip. Um, If you don't know what a guilt trip is, hold on to the near the end of the episode. I will explain exactly what a guilt trip is. I will tell you how to recognize a guilt trip and I will also help you cope with a guilt trip. 
These are all things I think we, 90% of us experience in our life at some point. So I think it's super important to talk about because when we, it's just like piling on our emotions, right? If we don't deal with our emotions, guilt is another emotion. So when we don't deal with our emotions and we keep building it up and building it up and building it up, one day we are going to crack. (laughs) We are going to explode. Things are not going to go very well so we need to make sure that we are dealing with our emotions properly we have these coping mechanisms we can recognize when we're feeling this type of guilt you know is an appropriate feeling or an inappropriate feeling you know why are you feeling this guilt we're gonna get right down to the core of the problem so sometimes guilt is appropriate and the degree to which people actually feel guilt really varies Um, it all varies on certain personalities because some certain personalities may experiencing may experience relatively pretty much no like little to no guilt in their life and a lack of guilt and remorse is actually one characteristic that experts have used to diagnose psychotherapy um And sometimes guilt is appropriate. So it links us to our moral compass, right? To our core values. Um, What do we believe in? And it points us in the right direction to make our wrongs right. Um, But more often than not, guilt crosses the line into inappropriate. And it keeps us kind of stuck in the past, um, in a moment, in a very negative moment, you know, and this can all lead to depression and mental illnesses, like I mentioned. Um, so guilt is, guilt is very normal, but there is a fine line between appropriate and inappropriate, um, feelings of guilt. So what is the difference between shame and guilt? Um, shame and guilt are two very closely related concepts. Um, and each is like defined in different ways though. And basically guilt is typically linked to a specific harm right? Whether it's real or perceived, the specific harm. Whereas shame involves negative feelings about yourself kind of more generally. You feel shameful about yourself, right? You will, maybe this is a sign of you're, you're not loving yourself right now. You feel that shame. Whereas guilt is usually pretty much directed to a, a a hurtful situation, um, some kind of pain, some kind of hurt. So that's the difference between shame and guilt. They're both very closely, um, connected, Guilt can lead to a lot of shame. Shame can lead to a lot of guilt. Kind of goes hand in hand. So how can we exactly deal with our guilt, let go of our guilty feelings so that we can move on with our life and better ourselves so we don't have that burden on our shoulders? When we're walking around with such a huge burden over our shoulders, it is very draining. It consumes us. It consumes our life, our mind, everything we think about, and it is not fun because it's usually a negative situation right that we're feeling guilty about so this can really cause a lot of harm so we need to make sure that we're able to shake it off let it go set ourselves free move on with our lives because if we're always stuck in this guilt cycle um, we will never be fully happy we'll never be able to live our life to the fullest and be happiest because we are stuck in this vicious circle going around and around and around and around So my first tip for you, which I think is one of the most important things I'm going to be saying today is remember the flip side of guilt, okay? Guilt makes us feel lower. It makes us feel low. It makes us feel gross. It makes us feel that shame. Not good. But the fact that you can feel guilt is actually a very good sign because guilt is a sign of empathy. It's a sign that we care about not hurting others. So at the University of British Columbia, uh, British Columbia, there was a pair of researchers and they set out to determine the opposite of psychotherapy. So that was their challenge. And basically the opposite of psychotherapy, so being a psychopath. And they found that a significant part of the answer is a tendency to feel guilt. So... Plus, it's also a predisposition um, that guilt often goes together with honesty, cooperation, consideration, consciousness. Um, And these are all good things that researchers kind of have set out as compassionate morality. So guilt can be a good thing. And the fact that you are feeling guilt means that you care. So it can be a good sign. It is a good sign a lot of the time because you you care deeply about the situation. You don't want to intentionally hurt others, even though maybe you intentionally did right down to your core. That's not the person that you are because you feel that guilt. So always remember the flip side of guilt. There are positive sides to it. 
The next one is right any outstanding wrongs. I think this is pretty self-explanatory because not all guilt is an illusion. Yes, we can perceive guilt and it's not always accurate. But if you feel guilty about a wrong that you have not righted, you just need to go ahead and make that situation right. You need to make amends. This can be a very hard thing to do. It can be very awkward to reach out. You're probably going to find a million reasons not to. But once you do reach out, you're going to feel really glad that you did. And a heartfelt apology, um, even if it doesn't make amends to the other person, even if that's not enough for the other person, maybe at this point, it is going to give you a little bit of freedom. Maybe not the entire, you know, maybe not so much freedom, but it will give you some freedom to let go of that, that you know that you tried, you did do a genuine apology, a heartfelt apology, and that is going to make you feel better on the inside. So it is time for a little bit of a break, but when I get back, I'm going to be sharing a few more tips on how we can set ourselves free from guilt. We can move on with our lives. And then, like I said, I will be jumping into survivor's guilt, what exactly that is, who feels survival's guilt. I'm going to talk about some studies and then we'll jump into um, guilt trips, exactly what that is, how we can recognize them and how we can cope with guilt trips. So lots of information to share with you still. Do not go anywhere. I will be right back. So I definitely value a quality night's sleep. But just because I value a quality night's sleep does not mean I always get what I want, right? I'm a restless sleeper. I am kind of a night owl, but I'm also a morning person. So you see where my conflict is here. But ever since I have been using my products from Linens and Hutch, They have given me an entire new meaning to a quality night's sleep. One of the products that I purchased was the mattress topper. And I have a pretty comfy bed to begin with, but literally laying on this mattress topper feels like I'm sleeping on a bed of clouds. And then when you add in my bamboo sheets, my alternative comforter, and my nice quilt, oh my gosh, it has given me a whole new meaning to a good night's sleep. So since you are a life and happiness listener, you need to head on over to linensandhutch.com slash life, enter in the promo code GSMC life, and you will be receiving 70% off and free shipping site wide. You are not going to want to miss these products. There was a 100 day trial period, money back guaranteed, but trust me, I know you're not going to need it. (laughs) Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe. just in case you forgot. Today we are talking about lifting off that burden of guilt off of our shoulders, being able to forgive ourselves, move on, and live our life to the happiest and the fullest. So I'm going to jump right back in to more tips on how you can let go of that guilt. I mentioned that we need to remember the flip side of guilt. We need to right any outstanding wrongs. And the next thing that we need to do... The next thing we need to know, first of all, is that a lot of what the mental health world knows about guilt comes from research with veterans, combat veterans, okay? So war is basically filled with opportunities to feel guilty, okay? And this is where so much research has been done. So guilt about killing the enemy, guilt about enjoying enjoying killing the enemy, guilt about killing or displacing civilians, you know, guilt over surviving when others have died, which I will jump into later, um, guilt about violating the no man left behind, right? There's so many things that go into it. But veterans' guilt, even if the circumstances are specialized, can really apply to all of us. So, there's there's so many different types of guilt. And 
when we think about this, we need to challenge the hindsight bias. This is my next tip for you. So the first is the hindsight bias, okay? So this means is that a mistaken belief that the outcome was known at the time. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example with these veterans in the military. So in the military, a soldier might feel very guilty about shooting someone who appeared threatening, but turned out to be unharmed. Now, this means that in the situation, right, we felt like that was the right choice, but it turned out that it wasn't. So what do you do in this situation? And we have to think honestly about what you actually knew at the time, okay? So you have to differentiate between I should have known and I wish I had known. So you you it's not you should have known because you didn't know and you could you couldn't have known in that moment, right? It's you just knew what you did in that very moment and you acted upon it. So you have to change that dialogue in your head to I wish I had known. Um, you know, it like for another example is you have to switch I should have known she was depressed to I wish I had known she was depressed, but I didn't know one way or the other. Does that make sense? So we have to, we're challenging the hindsight bias. Often when we feel guilty, um, my next tip here for you is because we often believe that there is no good reason for the course of action that we took, that we should have done better. So this is the lack of justification. So when we feel guilty about an outcome, it's often because of two things. And we believe that there must be must have been a better path for a better outcome. And we think we would have had the resources required for an ideal outcome at the time, even if we didn't. So how do we challenge a lack of justification? Well, we have to think about all of the information, the skills, the resources that you had at the point when you made your decision. And this will often help you lead down a path of realization that there really wasn't a good option. So you can't hold your actions to the past to these standards, the skills, the maturity, and wisdoms of today because it it was in the past. You didn't know what you know right now. So that you have to challenge the lack of justification. Next is that with guilt comes a sense of over-responsibility. When you feel guilty, you feel over-responsible for something. So we have to fight this thought process. You know, when we believe we were solely or most responsible for what we what occurred, what situation happened, we have to challenge this it, this this thought process. So we have to ask ourselves, who was acting inappropriately? Okay, think of all of the responsible factors. You know, when you feel solely responsible, dig a little bit deeper into this because there is likely a host of reasons that all add up. Okay, there are reasons for everything. So you got to dig a little bit deeper and find out the core reason, the core responsible factors of this. Now, we need to challenge the thinking error of wrongdoing. Okay, when we feel guilty, it's often because we feel like we did something wrong. Um, and to challenge this, you know, we have to think about intent. Think about the difference between knowingly doing harm versus a bad outcome unfolding unintentionally. And sometimes we do, we do things intentionally and we feel guilty for actually that wrongdoing. So we actually did spread a rumor or, you know, we did throw somebody under the bus at a situation, you know, I mean, hypothetically, (laughs) but in this case, you know, guilt is appropriate when we actually, when we do something wrong like that. But among all of this, you know, we have to let that grow out of proportion. Um, We have to think about the emotions that were involved, the anger, the hurt, the grief. We have to reflect on how much, you know, you've already beaten yourself up already about the situation and think about whether you would do this situation again. Now, my last tip for you about surviving guilt, moving on, is that time heals all. This is like the most annoying piece of advice I think someone can give, which I've mentioned before on this podcast because I I hate this piece of advice, but it's true. And it's because we don't want to hear it, right? We don't want to hear that we have to wait to feel better. We just want to feel better right now. So there were some researchers at the University of Queensland and they found that negative self-conscious emotion like guilt or shame, is felt less frequently as we get older. So if none of these tips are working for you, 
focus on the last one. I guess just wait till you get older because you're going to feel a little bit less guilty. (laughs) Now, the goal of everything that I was saying so far is that it's not simply to tell yourself it wasn't my fault because it definitely could be. But instead, you know, we have to help put guilt-inducing behavior into context. We have to feel some compassion for ourselves and we have to let ourselves move forward with our lives. So there are my tips for you that I have about letting go of that guilt, shaking it off, moving on, freeing yourself from that burden. Now let's jump into what exactly survivor's guilt is. Um, Survivor's guilt can occur in relation to a traumatic event, um, a loss of a life, basically something very traumatic. And when a person survives an event that others did not, then this can lead to feelings of guilt. So this is survivor's guilt. And survivors may question why they escaped death when others lost their lives. This is kind of the most common situation of survivor's guilt. And they also may wonder whether there was something they could have done to prevent this traumatic event or preserve life for others. So this is a diagnosis. This is a a mental health condition, a mental illness. um, And it's very real. It's very true. So people who may um, experience survivor's guilt, um, this can include like war veterans, first responders, 9-11 survivors, cancer survivors, um, crash survivors, natural disaster survivors, witnesses to a traumatic event, um, family members of those who have developed, you know, a fatal hereditary condition, Um, those who lose a family member to suicide, that's survivor's guilt as well, parents who outlive their children. You know, these are all just examples of who can feel survivor's guilt. And there was a study back in 2018 and researchers surveyed people who were receiving treatment from a traumatic event um, that was a stress clinic in the UK and they found that 90% of participants who had survived an event when others had died experienced feelings of guilt and the findings of a study in 2019 suggest that 55 to 63.9 percent of people who survive lung cancer for example experience guilt it is very common it is very you know when we go through a traumatic event it is very common to feel survivor's guilt so how do we cope with survivor's guilt and I think one of the best ways that we can cope with all guilt in general, but I think this is super beneficial for survivor's guilt, is by doing something good for others. People who survive a traumatic event, you know, you can really feel better when you help others in some way. Maybe you want to educate people about your experience. Maybe you want to volunteer at a charity. Maybe you want to donate blood. Maybe you want to make a charitable donation. You know, things like this that can help other people basically just a a a do good random act of kindness that can really help lift that survivor's guilt because it feels like you are putting some good back into the world you're doing good for somebody else and you're not feeling that burden on your shoulders you are letting that go and putting that energy into doing something positive for somebody else or for lots of people so Okay, it's time for another break, but when we get back, I'm going to jump into a few more. I have about three more tips of how to cope with survivor's guilt, and then I will talk about a guilt trip, how to recognize that, and how to cope with a guilt trip as well. So lots more information to share. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
welcome back to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast. It is the last stretch of today's episode talking all about letting go, freeing yourself of that guilt, of that burden. So I do have a couple more um, tips for you to coping with your survivor's guilt if you do experience this in your lifetime. So first one is doing something good for others. Now my next one is accept and allow these feelings. Now just like I've mentioned a lot about our emotions, it is very important to let ourselves feel them because if we don't let ourselves feel our emotions, we're just suppressing them downwards and they're going to pile up and we are going to explode one day and it's going to be a lot worse. So even though that survivor's guilt is not always very rational, um, it is definitely recognized as a response to trauma, okay? So it is very, very real. And we have to accept and we have to allow the feelings that surface from this. And we have to take time to process the guilt, the grief, the fear, you know, the loss of this traumatic event and the loss of life. Um, If these feelings are very overwhelming um, and it's not manageable, that's when we need to reach out to some extra help and just just seek, seek help, seek professional help, go to a friend, a family member, you know, but we do need to let ourselves feel these emotions. Um, If we don't deal with them, if we don't reflect on them, you know, write about them, think about them, you know, really let yourself um, dive in to these emotions a little bit more um, and ask for help when you need it. Because if we don't let ourselves feel these, it's just going to keep reoccurring. We're never going to truly deal with it. So make sure you let yourself feel the way that you are feeling. Um, But there's always a fine line when we have to, you know, stop being so hard on ourselves and be able to let go. But I think the process of letting go is letting yourself feel first. Now, use mindfulness techniques. Of course, mindfulness techniques um, is very beneficial for people who have experienced trauma, um, especially during flashbacks or just periods of intense and like painful emotions. So just try some like grounding techniques, you know, focus on your breath, um, feeling like um, textures nearby, like different fabrics and stuff can be really calming and grounding for people. Um, you know, paying attention to all your senses, things like that, just mindful techniques to bring you back to center. center. And then my next one and my last one for survivor's guilt is just practicing self-care, um, mental, physical, emotional self-care, do things that make you feel good, um, do things that make you feel good mentally, physically, emotionally, go for a workout, um, do some reflection in your journal, have a hot bath, whatever you need to do to practice that self-care and remind yourself that you love yourself and that you can care for yourself and that you will move on from the situation. Now, My last thing I'm going to be talking to you about today is guilt trips. Um, I'm sure you've heard this term before. Um, Guilt trip is a manipulation tactic, um, basically making someone feel guilty. So that guilt kind of acts as an an incentive to think or behave a way that we normally wouldn't. So often this basically involves a manipulator acting victimized usually um, or making like quite grand gestures to create this emotional debt on somebody else. Um, So basically, has anyone ever made you feel bad about something that you did or didn't do? This can be a sense of a guilt trip. So guilt tripping is an indirect approach to communication. It's a crappy approach to communication. Even when you haven't done something wrong, the person might imply that the situation is somehow your fault. I think this is like the worst type of guilt trip, right? And they they usually make their own unhappiness very clear and then they leave it to you to find a way to fix the problem, even if it's not your fault. And it can be pretty effective too. People can be pretty good at manipulation and guilt trips. And so if you feel guilty about somebody else's suffering, then you're more likely to do what you can to help, right? So guilt trips do work. And whether it's intentional or it's not, guilt tripping prevents that healthy communication, right? It prevents resolution from conflicts. It often provokes feelings of resentment and frustration and and negative emotions. So guilt tripping behaviors often show up in really close relationships, Um, your romantic partner, your friendships, professional relationships, family members, the people that we are mostly that we are close to. So it can basically pop up in any relationship, but I find that it is most common in those close relationships when it's not dealt with properly can really tear those relationships apart. 
So people often use guilt to express their frustration, um, their annoyance, um, usually when something prevents them from coming out and saying exactly how they feel. So they use a guilt trip kind of as a cover-up or a cop-out. Um, and you know, guilt trip, they may use a guilt trip if they have difficulty with being assertive with communication, um, directly expressing their feelings or their needs. So how to recognize a guilt trip. So people who are maybe trying to guilt trip you, these are just going to give you some examples of maybe how to recognize them. So pointing out their own efforts and hard work to make you feel like you have fallen short, that you are behind. Um, making sarcastic or passive aggressive remarks about a situation, um, ignoring your efforts to talk about the problem, giving you the silent treatment, that's a deadly guilt trip, um, denying their irritation, um, even though that their actions tell you otherwise, um, showing no interest in doing anything to improve the situation themselves, they want you to do all the work, using body language to communicate their displeasure, um, you know, maybe it's a sigh, crossing their arms, slamming objects down, slamming a door, stomping, whatever that case is, um, or making leading remarks that are meant to appeal to your emotions. So by this, I mean like sentences like, remember when I did um, X for you, or don't I do things for you all the time? You know, questions like that, that is a sense of a guilt trip. So how do we cope with a guilt trip? My first tip for you is listen empathetically. Um, It is really tough to listen to someone if they won't admit that there's a problem. This is like the most frustrating thing, right? But when you get the discussion started by pointing out their behavior, um, give them space to express their feelings and listen empathetically. Sit down, really have a serious conversation with them um, and just give your full your full attention, your full ears and really have an empathetic ear when you're listening to the situation. More oftentimes than not, the person that is trying to guilt trip you, they are trying to deal with their emotions and it's coming out in a very inappropriate way. And it's affecting somebody else in a very negative way. And so sometimes we need to take the high road. We need to just lend an an empathetic ear and pay attention to, you know, maybe why this is coming up for them. You know, why are they feeling this kind of guilt? Why are they putting this on you? What is the core problem? The next thing is asking questions. So while you are giving an empathetic ear, um, someone that might resort to guilt when they don't know how to advocate themselves Um, in more direct ways, right? So when you can ask questions, you can find those direct ways. So if you notice that there's exaggerated body language or exaggerated emotions, um, smirky remarks, just other signs of guilt tripping, try to use open-ended questions to encourage them to express themselves directly. Because guilt trip is like an indirect approach to communication and it's not a healthy approach to communication. So Ask things like, you seem upset. What's going on? Um, It seems like you're frustrated with that assignment. Can I help you? Um, I'd love to help if I can. What would you like me to do? Is there something I can do? Um, You know, why why are these emotions coming up for you? Just open-ended questions for them so they can start to open up um, about their feelings. Um, The next one is just recognizing where the guilt is coming from. Um, You know, because guilt can come up, you know, when we see a relationship as unequal, um, when we feel like we're being taken advantage of, um, when we when we haven't learned to communicate our needs very appropriately. So recognize where the guilt is coming from for this person. Um, these factors don't make guilt tripping any more productive. They don't make it right or anything like that, but they can help um, lend more of a compassionate ear, a compassionate perspective um, because you can be setting boundaries now. And when we set boundaries, these boundaries will protect our needs while also teaching the person that is trying to guilt trip you that you won't respond that the way that they like, right? You know, it's just like a bully. You don't you don't want to give them the response that they want, right? So this can help them see the benefit of exploring other communication methods that are that are appropriate and healthy and that guilt tripping isn't necessary to get your point across. So guilt tripping isn't always intended as manipulation, um, but it has a lot of negative effects on a lot of people. So 
Open communication can really help you express your needs more effectively and it can encourage others to express their needs more effectively as well. So open communication is key. Well, that is all the information I have for you today about setting yourself free and letting go of that guilt. Um, I hope today was beneficial for you. I hope you learned some new things, some new tips, some coping mechanisms, um, or maybe just learned a little bit more exactly where guilt comes from and how to recognize those factors. So thank you so much for listening to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. I had so much fun sharing all this information with you. Um, Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. I've got new episodes out every single Monday and Thursday. Head over to our social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I update those regularly. I would love to um, chat with you, communicate, engage, whatever you would like as well. Please do not forget to leave a five-star review. It helps out a ton and it is my favorite thing to read. So thank you so much. Stay happy, stay positive, and use an appropriate form of communication. (laughs) Thank you so much. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.